Becoming a pro footballer in Europe was Johanna Omolo's childhood dream. While he has made it, thousands of young people come here from Africa every year with the same dream. You have like 6,000 kids coming from Africa, but out of these 6,000 kids, I can tell you maybe four or five will make it. What about the rest? My name is Johanna Omolo. I'm a Kenyan. I am a father of two and uh, also a husband to a lovely wife. And I'm also a philanthropist. I, I have a foundation back home in Kenya where I grew up, where we try to help the kids to get uh, opportunity, to give them hope, to better living. So what's it like to be one of the few African footballers who make it in Europe? Johanna Omolo is one of 2006 Africans currently playing abroad. The Kenya international left his home in 2007, but he hasn't forgotten where he came from. He has the same urge to give something back to the community as African superstars like Didier Drogba, Samuel Eto'o, and Sadio Mane, who became role models for every young African footballer. It was never easy for Johanna. The place he grew up in still haunts him today. Dandora is an eastern suburb of Nairobi. It's known for being the biggest dump site in Kenya. Dandora is a pretty difficult place. I lived pretty close to, to the dump site. Uh, walking distance, three minutes. So it was uh, really, really, really cold. And the stench, it's unbearable. You cannot stand it. Unfortunately, you have poverty, you know? A lot of families live in less than a dollar, right? And uh, that means education is not good. So the only thing was football or crime. I got lucky because I stuck to football. Omolo has been living in Europe since 2007. The new climate was a shock to his system. You know, the first time uh, I came here, we were like training in the evening. And I was really, you know, the fingers and the, the toes were really like terrible, like so cold. I had to stop. I told the coach, really, uh, I have to go, like, <laughs> I have to go inside. And everyone was there just, you know, laughing. Amolo's two kids were born here in Belgium, and they call the country home. Just one example of how much has changed since he arrived in Europe. Omolo has turned out for five clubs in Belgium. Most recently, he spent four years with Cercle, the smaller of the two Bruges-based first division clubs. <laughs> Are you making a film? What? Are you making a film? Yeah, I want to be, I want to be president. So. <laughs> As a kid, I never imagined I'd be a place like this. Now, it's uh, yeah, you can come from home to training and just pick up your whatever yeah, your shoes you know and uh, growing there you could not we would play without shoes you know in the beginning when we were young no shoes even the balls you know the balls here are uh, you know uh, good balls at home we really used the paper balls you know and uh, it was just fun and just to distract us from uh, from everything that's going on around you it was more and skip. All the trash is from all over Nairobi. You know, everyone throws their trash in the door. We <laughs> played football uh, just the next week, so we used the the plastic bags from from the garbage to make football. My, my, my friends, you know, stopping football, trying to go to the dump site, get things, sell them. Yeah, it's, it, it became like part of our lives. There's a saying in Kenya, nothing good comes from Dandora. What worries Johanna is that kids like Alessandro are still facing the same problems that he faced as a youngster 20 years ago. 
maisha ni hard sasa zingine ukuli sasa zingine unazoea sasa zingine mtu anapigwa ngeto kimuona na uta ana juana chakula kulisha familia so life inakuwa hard mbaya sana wengi wameacha ball wakaingia wakakufa tukawazika na maisha ikaendelea while Johanna became a footballer in Europe, one of his oldest friends, Victor Akumu, stayed and became a street food vendor. But for many young people, it's hard to resist the money gangs can offer. It was just last, last week. There was a, a friend of ours who plays soccer, but he was involved in some, 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 some parts of crime. Some policemen shot him and he, and he died just instantly. We are torn between, in between. We don't know, because if you look at soccer, there is no revenue. And the people are seeing that uh, the gangs have revenue. Few players can live from football alone. Johanna's parents don't live in Dandora anymore. With his help, they were able to move to a wealthier, safer part of Nairobi. His parents were initially skeptical that football could provide a stable career. When he was 13, his mother stopped him from going to Norway for trials. Two years later, he went and gave the money he earned to his mum. <laughs> football inaweza fanya mtu awe mzuri kubadilisha juu wakati huo baba yake sasa ana retire lakini mimi bado nilikuwa nashuka nywele when i came from from norway for the first time i saw i saw my mother you know had this smile yeah like there was light in her eyes and all that because of football and for that moment i i realized like I, 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 I was born to do something to, for this family. By this time, Johanna had already entered the football academy of a Belgian agent in Kenya. At age 17, he signed his first contract in Europe. He has not told me there is, a, there is pressure. Eh? So whenever, uh, whenever we ask him some, something, he's uh, giving uh, the free, hand, free, free heart. The first African players came to Europe in the 1930s, recruited by clubs in Porto and Paris from Portuguese and French colonies. By the 1960s, 10% of players in France's first and second divisions were born in Africa. In the 1990s, Cameroon eliminated the reigning world champions Argentina at the World Cup in Italy, while Ghana and Nigeria won under 17 World Cups. Foreign agents flooded the continent to recruit African footballers for the European market. Playing in Europe became a business model for African players. But once they made it there, many wanted to put their past behind them. Most African players, they don't want to talk about it. Some don't want even to go back because they say it's, uh, it's terrible, it's horrible. But for me, I'm proud of where I come from. And uh, it's from, for that I I really want to give back. I want to give something back because it's a struggle. It was a struggle for me and it's still a struggle for a lot of kids. When I see all this here, I, the first thing that comes in my mind is why can't I have this in, you know, in Kenya, in Dandora? In 2017, Johanna decided to do something for his community. He set up his own foundation. Just 300 yards away from the dump site, he established a soccer academy. Alessandro and Teddy are enrolled there, two kids who dream of following in Johanna's footsteps and becoming professional footballers. English Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, Zote. Alessandro and six other kids have a scholarship from the Johanna Omolo Foundation. This is where they go to hone their skills. 
naenda kucheza passion yangu nyenye nimeshazoea juni talent yenye Mungu alinipatia nikiwest itaenda hivyo sasa najaribu ku aim bali nataka kufika Compared to Europe, there are not enough quality academies here for players in the decisive age bracket between 12 and 16. And the kids don't dream of playing in the Kenyan Premier League. Our main objective is to develop good soccer in Kenya. And locally, if you can have a very competitive league. Not only you are successful when you go to Europe. So these young kids, what we impact to them, they can be pro when they are here in Kenya. Andrew Juma is an example of a former academy player who made it in the Kenyan Premier League. He pushes the boys to focus on soccer and education, as not all of them will become pro footballers. The academy made my mentality to see football as a career when I was a kid. Okay, I earn around a thousand dollar, approximately a thousand dollar. And it does help a lot now, because I can even pay my sister's school fees in the university, pay my, ma my mom rent. I can even buy a kid a boot, because when I was in the academy, some people bought me boots. So now I can do the same. It's a tough task to change the kids' perspective and make them see the opportunities available in Africa, as most of them will always dream of making it in Europe. My advice now, and especially now because I have a lot, a lot of kids who look up on me in the foundation. We try to, to build a structure back home because if we do it there, there's a big, big part of those kids who will make it, who will earn their living, you know, and it's easier there than here. But the difficulty is that when they see you here, they think, yeah, but you are there and you made it, you see? African players coming here, it's really, really important that they get some help, you know, to integrate in the society. People here, they cannot confront you direct, especially in, uh, in Belgium. Yeah? You, you do something wrong, something they don't understand, don't like, they won't tell you. In Africa, they are used to, they don't like something, they'll tell you and then you have to deal with it. Fortunately, Johanna got plenty of advice from older African players, helping him get used to the European mentality. For my kids, I want to make them understand where I came from, what's, what's in the other side of the world, because it's important for them. They are just here, you know, they, they don't know really what's like missing a meal or uh, not having uh, yeah, to eat anything, to go to school or uh, no football to play, something. they don't know that kind of life. Most of the time, uh, maybe the kid wants to play but he's tired and, you know, we have to give him time to rest. He loves football, so I, um, I get to watch him do what he love and it's a good thing to see someone doing what he love. Throughout his career, Johanna Omolo has never lost his love for the beautiful game. But he has had to make sacrifices to stay in football. In January 2021, he signed a contract in Turkey's top division. Zoom for my new home. Erzurum is in eastern Anatolia. 4,000 kilometers away from his family in Bruges. From a professional point of view, moving was a good decision. In, in Europe, it's more maybe, let's say, tactical, you know, playing with, with spaces and all this. Uh, here, it's, uh, it's more physical, more, more, more direct football. And I think that's, uh, that's an advantage for, for, for African players. Omolo enjoys the attention. The Kenyan international is a star here. But from a personal point of view, he misses driving his kids to school every day, like he did in Belgium. 
Okay, okay. That's nice. That's uh, I I dreamt about you guys. That you are going to school today. <laughs> what? We don't be in school today? Yeah, I dreamt that today you went to school and you are very happy. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. If Erzurum stays in the top flight, Johanna will stay in Turkey and his family will join him in the summer. A new chapter of his life as an African footballer in Europe. But the time to return home draws closer. Like other footballers worldwide who donate at least 1% of their earnings, Johanna joined the Common Goal initiative to change things for the better. However... I want to be irrelevant. I don't want to be having a foundation to help. I want to grow up in a world that all these things are being, are being catered for. Like here, you have uh, football clubs, you know, having a, a good structure for the kids. I want to live life with my family, just to live like normal people people but now it's yeah, it, break my, it breaks my heart that I am needed because it's that means that yeah we are we still have a long way to go